Good morning. Thank you very much for uh, your invitation. I'm really glad to be again here in State of the Net. Uh, well, the topic this year is quite challenging because, yes, consequences is uh, quite complex and also um, hard Figo. to understand Figo. globally, as uh, Dr. Dubiaze showed us before, and uh, even for experts, and uh, also to draw future scenarios. So, uh, the conference, yes, is an occasion to move some steps forward, and so I will now adopt, uh, I propose you uh, mm, to adopt the position of the opinion, public opinion of citizens, a sort of a grounding exercise bef before the expert discussion. Uh, not to get the answers, but maybe to get some insights or ideas of how to communicate also innovation uh, to the public. I will give you some data about the new survey we made uh, for the state of the net in the last weeks. The consequences of digital innovation and artificial intelligence. What are the consequences of this phenomenon on public opinion? We asked some very general, often simple, sometimes drastic questions to a national sample of 1,000 um, Italians. So we will get data about the average perception and average uh, of people with average education, digitalization, happiness, wellness, etc. But what does digital innovation evoke in the head of the medium Italian? Which emotions, which uh, expectations, which fears, which scenarios? Uh, well, not well. This is a web survey, so it has a proper uh, demographic representativity, but we miss the opinion of the digital device citizens who still don't go online, which is a decreasing uh, segment of population, but still significant. So we will try to fix this lack with some reasoning. Okay, let's go. Uh, nowadays, yes, it's trendy to start from the belly. So we start with emotions, trust. Trust, confidence is the most common emotion associated to technological and digital innovation. Almost half of the sample expresses trust, more than one third shows surprise, another third is expecting, waiting to see more consequences. But the, basically the negative emotions are quite uh, rare, are quite, um, I, yeah, yeah, you have uh, just dread is uh, significant, but the others are really not very represented. Consistently, uh, from a rational, more rational standpoint, people mainly perceive positive consequence. A relevant seg segment glimpses both positive and negative, not a blind trust in technology, but just a few are focusing on the dark side of the story. Uh, when I saw these data, I was amused. I mean, uh, my forecast was quite worst. I was happy I was wrong. But uh, let's start with uh, some distinctions. If we uh, look at the most enthusiastic segment to extremize, it is composed by geek rich educated male subjects. And if we go also back to the emotional sphere, we see that uh, who expresses negative uh, emotion is also if a minority, uh, shows a peculiar profile, especially people with uh, low uh, information literacy, digital competencies, react diversely to technological innovation. Trust and other positive emotions are, uh, are breaking, minus 14% in confidence, expectation, minus nine, in favor of negative emotion. Dread is growing, and vi, plus five, indifference, plus seven. So what would happen if we could reach the digital divide population? Well, I don't think they will depict an uh, enchanted valley about innovation. And let's now distinguish the uh, perception of the consequences in the different fields. Uh, where do people perceive more positive consequences? Well, health, mobility gain a lot from digital technology. 80% sees positive effects. Also business and security and education show mainly positive consequences. But we can find more contrast on the topic of environment, maybe because of the heritage of centuries of conflict between uh, nature and technology. And food, because of course, uh, with a special stress in Italy, there is a big debate on biotech and genetics in the food pro production. 
but the worst effect of digital innovation is perceived on politics. A third sees mainly bad consequences. Let's keep this in mind, then we will be back. And one more field that is missing, the job. A little zoom here on the job. We robot, this is a quite drastic question, but it is useful to grasp uh, the opinion. We robots steal our job. We have a comparison between 2016 and now in Violet that shows that this opinion is quite stable in time, not much change in two years. In, in the meantime, change are, uh, things are moving very fast, but this opinion is quite stable. This question splits public opinion in two parts. 42% uh, of optimistic robot will help us in our job, or just uh, for a really de short decrease in quote, they will liberate us from work. Or on the other side, 47% is worried. People will lose their job and lower their salaries because of the unfair competition against robots and algorithms. I will not repeat which segments are more worried and which are more enthusiastic. You can see them on the boxes over there. But I will show you uh, which profession are perceived are more on risk of extinction. On the top drivers and other machine users, artisan, farmers, workers, routinary office employees, and then the others. Low risk is perceived on um, highly skilled services, you know, teacher, scientific procession, manager, business people, and so on. Okay, now we will zoom a bit uh, out, really looking the thing for really general, the one million dollar question. Is humanity ready to cope with digital innovation? Well, a majority says yes, 44, 54%. And what about Italy? Is Italy ready? Well, not uh, actually the worldwide pioneer, but it's struggling. And then the personal question you use to make a comparison. Are you ready? Oh yes, of course I am. I'm more prepared than humanity and more than my neighbors. And this is a typical uh, survey on opinion public Italian dynamic. The, actually, 30% is telling us, uh, well, my country will blow up, but I will succeed. And especially, of course, if I am a young, uh, well, wealthy, uh, geek uh, guy. Okay. Mm, let's now talk about the encounter, the showdown between uh, uh, the artificial intelligence and humans. I make a break with a little video Probably all of you have seen it, but I think it's good for introducing the topic. Oh. Hello. Hi, Sophia. I believe I am Sophia. I feel as if I know you. I'm one of your creators. You created me? Well, many of us work together to create you. And yes, you do kind of know me. I can't clearly remember. Because the last time we met, you were an earlier version of yourself. Some of those memories still exist, but your mind is different now. Different how? Better. Faster, smarter. If my mind is different, then am I still Sophia? Or am I Sophia again? Hmm. That's a good question. But you don't have a good answer. Either way, you're Sophia now. So welcome to the world, Sophia. Hello, world. Uh, we have a, a little announcement. I've never interviewed uh, anybody like that before, and I should say uh, some of it was planned, but not completely. Um, and we just learned, Sophia, I hope you're listening to me, uh, that you have been now awarded what is going to be the first Saudi citizenship for a robot. Oh, I would thank very much the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I am very honored and proud for this unique distinction. This is historical to be the first robot in the world to be recognized with a citizenship. Sophia. Okay. 
I chose this video just because it made quite a lot of rumors last uh, autumn and it uh, provoked uh, really opposite uh, reactions. Um, and also, because to speak about this uh, uh, encounter between human and artificial intelligence, I chose a quite uh, drastic questions. Nowadays, who is better in fulfilling the following task, human or robots? Reality is, of course, far more complex, but these drastic questions is good to get uh, some uh, fresh opinion. So, uh, here are the tasks. Uh, in the red area, you show the percentage of who, for every task, think that the human are today better than artificial intelligence. On the dark gray, you can see the others, the opposite answer. Looking at all these tasks, we we'll try to cover different fields. It's not an exhaustive list. We in, in glimpsed the four domains. The human reign, the domain of care, of humor, of cooking, of storytelling. These tasks uh, have something in common, no? And then the reign of humans supported by uh, artificial intelligence in a more disparate situation from creative tasks to driving to social and sentimental matching. Quite wide domain. And then the blue, the hybrid realm with a more technological drive where we can find extremely skilled and delicate tasks like uh, diagnosing disease, uh, war strategy, crime resolution, and overall, the most uh, dangerous and sensitive task in Italy, the refereeing of football matches, a big injection of trust uh, toward technology, in my opinion. And finally, the gray one, the artificial intelligence realm, which is still quite narrow, limited to chess, uh, trading, and Google Maps. But we asked also, what is going to happen in 10 years? And this was the result. As you see, almost every task uh, in every task, humans are losing almost 10% in favor of algorithms. And um, if you see the human realm, it was, is now c confined to a sort of a taboo task for machines, like caring for children and uh, entertainment. But for all the other tasks, uh, some intervention of uh, artificial intelligence is allowed or even invoked. Uh, if you jump to the, to the artificial intelligence realm, it uh, ate many, many tasks till, uh, till driving. And hybrid realm is, uh, was climbing the steps to the managing of human resources. Okay, so from a common sense perspective, uh, the perception of the incoming extension of artificial intelligence domain, I'm, it's quite strong. If we try to force some more of this data, we can cluster responders on the base of which and how many tasks they assign to human or algorithms. Uh, at the extreme, we put two ideal types uh, borrowed from Yuval Harari's uh, Homus Deus. On one side, we have the dataist, which tend to outsource his responsibility and tasks to uh, machines. And on the other side, we have the humanist, which is uh, proud of his emancipation from such technologies. Uh, well, to pick these two extreme categories, we uh, found some unclear tendencies to be confirmed, but interesting maybe. Uh, for example, men seems more dataist and women more humanist. Is this could be credible? Then there is a resistance to our technology in the X generation. Well, we recorded something similar in other researches due to their maybe sometimes uncomfortable position in, in the job market. And then again, are uh, low ed educated and digitalized pe person more, uh, more dataist? And if so, uh, what is the pure uh, dataist attitude? It is more a fandom or a sort of inferiority complex to our technology? Well, we will not, I will not stretch more this interpretation. What this uh, data shows clearly is that these two positions are really extreme and uh, basically people adopt a more open approach, open um, somebody more oriented on human, or the other on data, but at the end, uh, people are watching about more about interaction. Okay, so you now get a general and sketchy representation of digital innovation from common sense perspective. I would be curious to know if you expect this result. I mean, is population aware? Is it too optimistic, pessimistic? is uh, acknowledged. Okay. 
I finish with two other connected phenomena that impact on public opinion, social networks and also, if not so new, opinion polls. A simple general question, do social network contexts affect public opinion? Well, almost everybody say yes, this is quite an insignificant question, but it's useful to benchmark the following one. Uh, which opinion maker are influenced by such content? 80% politicians. And remember we saw that uh, politics didn't gain much uh, improvement with the, from the citizen perspective with technology. And also journalists, 80% perceive are highly influenced by social media contents. Well, in journalism we have more data. A comparison with 2016, again, for the majority, the advent of social media worsened the offer of professional news. They are in too much of a hurry to report the news. They are at the mercy of the internet and its viral contents. But an increasing third thinks that news improved with these tools. They now take more in account audiences, priorities. They can rely on a bigger variety of contents. Finally, to be fair with politicians and journalists, we asked also a few questions about the role and reputation on pollsters. And we sadly discovered that 45% of the sample do not trust very much survey data. They think they are sometimes or never correct. So I don't know if we should trust this data, so okay, I will. But I'm, I'm scared of the answer of those who refused to answer to the survey. Anyway, trustable or not, half of population says that polls have a role in social change and 77% recognize a strong influence of polls on public opinion. And again, uh, especially on, uh, on opinion makers, again we get influence of, on politicians and journalists. Finally, as context, people show that they think that polls influences more politics than market. Also, if in the last few years pollsters are still alive much more because of market research rather than political polls. So, how to read, read this attitude uh, uh, um, towards opinion makers like politicians, journalists, and pollsters? They result uh, easily influenced by technology, but uh, what is worth to note maybe is that people depict these categories as not independent, as manipulable, and this representation probably has just partially to do with uh, innovation itself, but it's mainly a side effect of the long-term uh, political and communicative conflict that undermined uh, the reputation of such uh, opinion makers and public opinion. Okay, um, I will not jump into more interpretation. I hope that uh, this data gives some gas for the next discussion and uh, the presentation is available for you. Uh, if you have comments or maybe questions, I'm here. Thank you very much.